So we have quite a bit of news for you today from Fallout to new games coming to Xbox to news on Twitter about things changing regarding the Xbox tax and more. So we do have quite a bit to get through. But as we start with almost every video, we're going to be starting today off with the top comment from my last video. Of course, it's been a couple of days since I have made a video. There's really not been much out there, but we do have this from Dark Angelic. Relax, dude. Microsoft is not going to withhold COD from PlayStation. I mean, they could if they wanted to. They didn't get to be a free trillion dollar corporation by refusing sales. No, but all it takes is two million subs coming from PlayStation to Xbox to counteract the deficit of making no sales from PlayStation regarding COD. This was already discussed and, you know, explored by Phil Spencer with Tim Stewart. So to say the notion that they couldn't do it is false. To say that they wouldn't do it is also false. It's all about a business. And you got that bit right when you said the latter part of your statement. But at the end of the day, if they can entice people to come over to the Xbox platform, then there is every possible way that they can do this. Obviously, it's not matching up with their market strategy, but that wasn't the purpose of that video. The purpose of that video was looking at the information presented at hand and if Sony were actually breaking their own agreement. But time will tell, and hopefully uh, we can all enjoy Call of Duty. Right, first news of the day, we have this over here. Fallout has been doing the rounds. There's no mistaking about it. The TV show has spurned wonders. People who have never played Fallout are buying the game and are looking into ways into enjoying what is out there. And Bethesda are leaving no stone unturned. Now with the new public test server for Fallout 76's Skyline Valley update is being available. You can explore the newly expanded map that takes you deep into the wooded heartland of Skyline Valley. Learn more in this week's Inside the Vault, but this is pretty much inside the valley area, and yeah, it looks kind of cool, and it's good to see that Fallout 76 has been getting some really cool numbers. It has broken its concurrent numbers pretty much day after day for the past few days, and you know, the show has just done amazing things for the overall presentation of the game. Now we also have this over here from Phil Spencer. Congrats to everyone involved. We're thrilled to welcome so many newcomers to the world of Fallout. And there is a lot of people buying it. And at the end of the day, the game is dirt cheap at the moment. Even if you wanted to check it out at some point, buy it now while it's on sale and just leave it there. You don't have to play it right now, but you know, at two pound or three pound for Fallout 4, that's a steal. From the highly rated show now getting its second season to our deep lined of lineup of Fallout games across consoles, PC, and mobile, thank you all for joining us in the wasteland. They invested a lot in this TV series, and unlike Halo, which decided that it wanted to do its own thing and not follow the story of the video game, we clearly saw how that looked. It didn't move the needle at all. The Last of Us, which closely followed the actual TV series, I mean the video games, that moved the needle quite a bit for Sony. Fallout 4 followed in the same footsteps, stayed true to the lore of the game, and followed the games, you know, followed what makes the game what it is pretty on point. And because of that, and because of how good the TV series was, it's actually spurred a lot of interest, and people are now out there in droves playing Fallout. Everyone I see is playing Fallout. It's really amazing to see how a TV show can do that when it's done right. Maybe season three Halo will do that too. But season two has been confirmed. Be interesting to see where it goes. Did I say season three? Season two. Right, so this one over here is actually pretty awesome news. It's from Clobril. Now, Kenna Bridge of Spirits is a game that I played maybe two, three years ago on PlayStation at launch. It was really good. It's a really good game. It's a platform game. It's not overly complicated, but it can get quite difficult with the boss battles. But it has a really charming story, a really good uh, gameplay mechanic. And these little things that you find, I forgot their name now, but they're really awesome. They help you out as well. So 
if I mean apparently Bridge of Spirits Deluxe Edition has received an ESRB rating for an Xbox Series XS version. When this game comes out, if it's not going to be on Game Pass, I highly recommend you pick it up. It is a good game. One that I do recommend you play. It's, you know, it's just an overall wonderful game. And I do hope that, you know, the Halloween and Christmas uh, version costumes for these guys actually get re-added for the Xbox version in due time. Because that would be cool as well. But yeah, we did get a couple of people down here talking about how, you know, Microsoft also makes their games exclusive, but I couldn't find a single game in my timeline to point at the fact that Microsoft has made a game three years exclusive. Microsoft never does that, and Sony does. And when I said typical Sony behavior, I got attacked by the so uh, you know the Sony fanboys, but then when I asked them, name me one game where Microsoft has you know money hatted the exclusivity for three years, yeah they kind of went silent and disappeared into the ether of nothingness because, as we all know, money hatting for two years, three years, five years is the mo for Sony. So to turn around and say that Xbox is doing that is pure lies. And if you do think of a game, I'm eager to hear it. But if you are playing, if you are interested in this game, which I highly recommend you should be, it is an absolutely beautiful game. Check it out. So Tom Warren here says, Microsoft has more bestsellers on PlayStation Store right now than Sony does. The Fallout TV show and Sea of Thieves on PS5 are certainly having an impact. And Darius here says, PlayStation fanboys wanted to play Xbox games all along. We can't be surprised. A W for Xbox for giving PlayStation fans more games to play is being dry. It's no surprise when you're owning companies like Bethesda, you know, Zenimax, Bethesda, Activision, Blizzard, you know, that a lot of those games, when their popularity hits, is going to be the top players. And, you know, games like Fallout, uh, Skyrim, Elder Scrolls, Call of Duty, these are all really big titles, but it's really interesting to see that the top 25 has more Xbox games now on there than it does PlayStation games. Now, hopefully this doesn't mean that Xbox is going to go and do the dirty, but it's interesting nonetheless that as a publisher now, as a game publisher, Microsoft is slowly becoming one of the biggest out there. So this one actually did interest me quite a bit. And Snowy Reigns here says, those ponies are in for it. Goodbye Xbox tax. Elon Musk says any accounts doing engagement farming will be suspended and traced to source. Now, if this actually goes ahead, right? If this actually does go ahead, that's going to be really, really interesting. Because PC Gamer, who has been engagement farming with uh, Starfield for the longest time, Eurogamer, who was engagement farming with Starfield, IGN, who was engagement farming, Metro, who was engagement farming, all of these are, you know, companies, publications, who use Twitter to engagement farm, could be seeing themselves suspended. So is this going to be the end of the Xbox tax? Is Elon Musk doing everyone a favor? Or is this just going to mean that everyone stops buying Twitter Blue now because there's no more money to be made because you can't engagement farm? And as such, everyone's going to cancel their subscription. And then Elon Musk is going to reverse this, you know, completely 86 it and then bring back the engagement farming. Because as we know, a lot of these publications are doing it for engagement, are doing it for the clicks to get more revenue. And obviously it is frustrating, it is annoying, but they are doing it because it's business. And if Elon's, you know, attempt here to reduce engagement farming rather than genuine engagement is actually incorporated and put through genuinely, well, I think PC gamers are going to find that they're not going to have anyone going to their website anymore. Neither is Kotaku. IGN's going to probably see about 90% of their user base from Twitter completely go down. This is going to be an interesting time if this actually does go ahead. I'm actually quite excited to see what they do with it, honestly, because it's going to be quite funny. 
This one is interesting because apparently Sony Pictures is reportedly in talks to buy Paramount. I think they're like the fourth or fifth company now in talks with Paramount. But Paramount has a lot of actual IPs, right? From uh, they're doing the Halo IP at the moment. They're doing, I think they've got access to the Turtles IP. Viacom is own, owns Turtles who are owned by Paramount. So there's actually a lot of IP here. Now there was talks that Microsoft were looking at Paramount to actually pick them up at some point, but whether that's gonna ever materialize or not is unknown. But now Sony has entered the bidding war. And honestly, at this point with Sony's uh, track record in trying to pick up all of these uh, TV kind of studios and uh, outlets, Maybe they're getting a bit too big for their own good. Maybe it's time for the FTC and the regulators, you know, the antitrust regulators to get involved and tell Sony to slow down a little. Maybe it's time for, you know, a, a little dose of their own medicine. Do you think it's going to happen? Not with the FTC involved, of course, because uh, they love PlayStation and anything that's pro PlayStation, they are willing to turn a battered eye. So, corrupt? Yes. Biased? Yes. Take it as you will. Finally, I wanted to talk about this because we spoke about this yesterday in my stream and it was interesting. Ghost of Tsushima's director's cut on PC will feature new PlayStation overlay, which includes your friends list, trophies, settings, your PS profile and crossplay. This also brought rise to people saying that, well, PS fanboys saying that Sony will now challenge Valve on PC to take over Steam and become the number one PC platform. I just don't think that's going to happen ever. But I do feel like Sony is in a unique position right now where they can test the waters to see how far the Steam community is willing to bend. Because they've been quite rigid for the longest time where they won't go to any other launcher. But if Sony released their games on the PlayStation launcher with a one or two year exclusivity, will they be willing to wait and for the game to go over to Steam after one or two years, or will they cave in, download the PlayStation launcher, and download, you know, buy the games off Sony, where Sony will take 100% of the profit and Steam will take nothing. As we know, the games on Steam have, uh, they've got a few games on Steam right now, but there's been talks about their launcher for quite some time. And with them now releasing their friends list trophies, it could be just integration straight into Steam and they're just not gonna bother with their launcher. There's always that possibility, but this will now require you to log into PSN or a version of PSN for you to do this because it will allow crossplay as well and for you to be able to chat with your friends and do stuff with PlayStation players. So overall, interesting times, but I do see Sony going down that route. And it will be interesting to see the hypocrisy when and if PlayStation, not PlayStation, but PC players decide that they are going to bend over and take it and go to the PlayStation launcher and, you know, buy the games from there. Now, obviously, everyone in my comment section is going to say, no, we will never do it. It's not out yet. So you can't say that. We'll have that discussion when it's actually out. Because at this point, there's still some time before it's actually finalized or normalized or whatever you want to call it. But until then, it'll be interesting to see where it goes. But that's the video, folks. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Let's have that discussion. Hope you've enjoyed it. And if you have, hit that like button, subscribe, hit that bell to stay up to date with all content I release. And just remember, when you're looking at stuff that is coming around in terms of engagement farming, Maybe PC Gamer and the likes of IGN and Kotaku, if they're not careful, they could be gone for a very long time. Who knows, folks? Who knows? One can only wish, right? All right, that's it. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Remain legend.